fixed on invention, flying like a bird, and the Big Bang formula. My competition would love to have their hands on this. These and more stories coming up on Invention. This is the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History, and this is Invention. I'm Lucky Severson. Welcome. It's the closest we've ever come to flying like a bird, hanging on to this glorified kite, humans glide with the air currents. But while birds have known how to ride the air thermals for tens of thousands of years, hang gliding's only been around a few decades. In aviation history, it's a relative newcomer. His name was Birdman Bill. Told by a car, he streaked through the sky, introducing hang gliding to thousands of people in the late 1960s. But he wasn't the first daredevil of gliding. Back in the 1890s, German aviator Otto Lilienthal made more than 2,000 glides before he crashed and died in August 1896. He was considered one of the most important men in aviation and inspired the Wright brothers, who also experimented with gliders before adding an engine and making that historical flight on December 17, 1903. From that day on, powered flight dominated aviation. But in the late 1940s, NASA aeronautical engineer Francis Regalo returned to the basics to produce a flexible delta wing. Initially planned as a cheap aircraft that could be folded and stored on the ground, Regalo's wing was swept up in the space race, once considered a mode of carrying capsules back to Earth. But its true mission was more down to Earth. In the early 60s, people were searching for a purely recreational aircraft, like flat kites towed by ski boats. But the flights were erratic. By chance, John Dickinson, a young Australian engineer with a passion for flying, saw a photograph of Regalo's Delta Wing. This had the essence of all the things that I was looking for in relation to um, simplicity, foldability, and uh, the fact that it would glide if the rope broke or the boat ran out of um, uh, power, which they frequently did. Dickinson kept working with the Regalo wing. With just the photograph, he set about designing a frame where the pilot would fit into the wing, allowing the pilot to fly safely behind the boat and eventually to fly without any tether. I was swinging my daughter on a, um, a swing in the park and uh, she was swinging by herself and I was pondering my problem and, and I could see this weight being shifted backwards and forwards and support and I thought, boy, if I just put my a-shaped frame in there, then I've not only got somewhere to sit, but I can use the weight shift for control. It may have been crude, fashioned from blue plastic and wood and costing only $24, but John Dickinson had designed a frame that would remain basically changed for the next 30 years. John took uh, Francis Regalo's Regalo wing and turned it into a sporting vehicle by fitting the frame the control bar and the gravity shift system. And uh, I became a test pilot and, uh, and I set all the world, early world records with it. And so entered the Birdman Bill Moyes, widely regarded as one of the fathers of hang gliding. Since he was a small child, he had been addicted to the notion of flight in the form of a recurring dream. I lived in a street with a rock ledge, uh, and uh, I dreamt time and time again that uh, I had a pair of wings, and I ran and leapt off this rock ledge and glided. And when I came to the hang glider, it did exactly what I had done thousands of times before, so it was no surprise to me. In 1967, his introduction to John Dickinson by a mutual friend made it possible for those nighttime fantasies to become reality. He understood what um, what I was trying to do and, to, and where I thought this thing could go. Uh, the only person in, in four years that uh, I was on the same wavelength with. 
Bill Moyes was hooked, and while John Dickinson gradually retired from the scene, the Birdman headed for the skies. He set new altitude records and began a series of flights in Australia, Europe, and the United States. But hang gliding was still very risky. Bill Moyes nearly lost his life during an exhibition flight in Melbourne. I was up about 500 feet and was tumbling so fast that I was just seeing uh, sky on earth, sky on earth, sky on earth, and we finally hit the ground. I woke up about four or five days later in hospital and uh, I was still uh, in few pieces, but in good shape. <laughs> it stopped Bill Moyes only long enough to mend. In 1970, he flew into the Grand Canyon. Bill Moy's son, Steve, was also infected and joined his dad for perhaps their most spectacular and dangerous adventure, a flight off Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa, more than 17,000 feet high. The flight from Kilimanjaro was the most memorable because it was so hard. It was 12 days of work to get there and months of preparation. It felt like it was worth the effort when we were in that flight. Okay, what have you done here, Steve? You changed the sticker. Bill Moyes had always built and designed his own gliders, and his breathtaking flights through the years had done wonders for the image of the sport. Using what he learned from John Dickinson, he and his son Steve formed a company that blossomed into a multi-million dollar business. The Moyes glider is one of the sport's undisputed leaders. Steve Moyes has won a world championship with one, and it is always very near or at the top of the world's competitions. These days, Bill has given up hang gliding, but a new set of knees due to all those landings hasn't kept him on the ground. He designs and flies the ultralight planes that tow Steve as they test their gliders. Technology has added new dimension to the world of hang gliders, and there's no doubt many designers have contributed along the way. But few could deny the work of Francis Regalo, Bill Moyes, and John Dickinson. They all played an important part in giving us a sport based on total trust in both of the air currents provided by nature and the contraption inspired by our desire to soar like a bird. Bill Moyes tried many times to get into the record books once he tried skiing on his hands. He didn't succeed, thankfully, because shortly thereafter he became fascinated with hang gliders. 